and welcome to Tom and Ben News Wikipedia News Edition Season 1 Remastered. Hmm. Well, anyways, today's episode is going to be one of the carbonated soft drink company. It's Pepsi. Pepsi is a carbonated soft drink with a cola flavor manufactured by PepsiCo. <laughs> As of 2023, Pepsi is the second most valuable soft drink brand worldwide behind Coca-Cola. The two share a long-standing rivalry in what has been called the Cola Wars. Pepsi, originally created in 1893 by Calvin Bradman named Red's Drink, was first sold in his drugstore in New Bern, North Carolina. <laughs> Renamed Pepsi Cola in 1898 due to its supposed digestive benefits, it was shortened to Pepsi in 1961. <sighs> the beverage's formula initially included sugar and vanilla but not Pepsi, despite speculation on the origin of its name. Early on, Pepsi struggled with financial stability, going bankrupt in 1923 but was subsequently purchased and revived by Charles Guth, who reformulated the syrup. Pepsi gained popularity with the introduction of Coca-Cola in 1923 saw Pepsi targeting the African-American market of an untapped demographic with positive portrayals and endorsements from prominent figures, boosting its market share. Despite occasional controversies, such as an aborted Madonna, advertisement and the Pepsi number fever fiasco in the Philippines, Pepsi has remained a prominent global brand. Partly thanks to innovative marketing campaigns and sponsorships in sports and entertainment. Pepsi's rivalry with Coca-Cola, highlighted by the Cola Wars, led to significant cultural and market competition, including the Pepsi Challenge, taste tests and the introduction of new Coke in response. <laughs> Pepsi's expansion into international markets has seen varied success, with notable ventures into the Soviet Union via a landmark barter deal and enduring popularity in certain regions over Coca-Cola. As of the early 21st century, Pepsi has become a global brand with Pepsi was first invented in 1893 as Pepsi may have been a reference to the drink aiding digestion like the digestive enzyme Pepsin, but Pepsin itself was never used as an ingredient to Pepsi Cola. The original recipe also included sugar and vanilla. <laughs> Bradham sought to create a fountain drink that was appealing and would aid in digestion and boost energy. In 1903, Bradham moved the bottling of Pepsi from his drugstore to a rented warehouse. <laughs> that year, Bradham sold 7,968 gallons of syrup. <sighs> the next year, Pepsi was sold in 6-ounce bottles and sales increased to 19,848 gallons. <laughs> <laughs> In 1909, automobile race pioneer Barney Oldfield was the first celebrity to endorse Pepsi, describing it as a holy drink. Refreshing, invigorating, a fine racer before a race. The advertising theme, delicious and healthful, was then used over the next two decades. 
In 1923, the Pepsi Cola Company entered bankruptcy, in large part due to financial losses incurred by speculating on the wildly fluctuating sugar prices as a result of World War I. <laughs> Assets were sold in Racine regarding the lot of Pepsi trademark. <sighs> Magardo was unsuccessful in efforts to find funding to revive the brand and soon Pepsi Cola's assets were purchased by Charles Jeff, the president of Loft, Incorporated. <laughs> Loft was a candy manufacturer with retail stores that contained soda fountains. He sought to replace Coca-Cola at his store fountains after the Coca-Cola company refused to give him additional discounts on syrup. <laughs> Jeff then had lost chemists reformulate the Pepsi Cola syrup formula. <sighs> On three occasions between 1922 and 1933, the Coca-Cola Company was offered the opportunity to purchase the Pepsi Cola Company, which had declined on each occasion. During the Great Depression, Pepsi gained popularity following the introduction in 1934 of a 12-ounce, 355 milliliters bottle. Prior to that, Pepsi and Coca-Cola sold their drinks in 6.5 ounce, 192 milliliters servings for about 5 cents a bottle. With a radio advertising campaign featuring the popular jingle, Nickel, Nickel, first recorded by the Tune Twisters in 1940, Pepsi encouraged price-conscious consumers to double the volume their nickels could purchase. The jingle is arranged in a way that loops, creating a never-ending tune. Pepsi Cola hits the spot. Twelve full ounces, that's a lot. Twice as much for a nickel, too. Pepsi Cola is a drink for you. Pepsi Cola hits the spot. Twelve full ounces, that's a lot. Twice as much for a nickel too. Pepsi Cola is the drink for you. Coming at a time of economic crisis, the campaign succeeded in boosting Pepsi's status. <laughs> From 1936 to 1938, Pepsi Cola's profits doubled. Pepsi's success under Jeff came while the lot candy business was faltering. <laughs> Since he had initially used lot finances and facilities to establish the new Pepsi success, the near bankrupt lot company sued Jeff for possession of the Pepsi Cola company. <sighs> A long legal battle, Jeff v. Loft, then ensued, with a case reaching the Delaware Supreme Court and ultimately ending in a loss for Jeff. From the 1930s through the late 1950s, Pepsi Cola Hits the Spot was the most commonly used slogan in the days of old-time radio, classic motion pictures, and early days of television. <laughs> it's jingle. Conceived in the days when Pepsi cost only five cents, was used in many different forms with different lyrics. <sighs> with the rise of radio, Pepsi Cola utilized the services of a young, up and coming actress named Holly Bergen to promote products, oftentimes blending her singing talents to the classic. Hits the spot, jingle. Film actress Joan Crawford, after marrying Pepsi Cola president Alfred M. Steele, became a spokesperson for Pepsi, appearing in commercials, television specials, and televised beauty pageants on behalf of the company. <laughs> Crawford also had images of the soft drink placed prominently in several of her later films. When Steele died in 1959, Crawford was appointed to the board of directors of Pepsi Cola, a position she held until 1973, although she was not a board member of a larger PepsiCo, created in 1965. 
Pepsi has been featured in several films, including Back to the Future Part 2, 1989, Home Alone, 1990, Wayne's World, 1992, Fight Club, 1999, World War Z, 2013, and in films, directed by Spike Lee. Pepsi marketing has also been marked in controversy. <laughs> 1989, Pepsi commissioned a $5 million marketing campaign to coincide with the release of Madonna's song, Like a Prayer, that was cancelled following strong backlash regarding the religious themes in the song's music video. In 1992, the Pepsi number fever marketing campaign in the Philippines accidentally distributed 800,000 winning lotto caps for a 1 million peso grand prize, leading to riots and the deaths of five people. In 1996, PepsiCo launched the highly successful Pepsi stuff marketing strategy. <laughs> Project Blue was launched in several international markets outside the United States in April. <sighs> The launch included extravagant publicity stunts, such as a Concorde airplane painted in blue colors, which was owned by Air France, and a banner on the MERS space station. <laughs> the Project Blue design was first tested in the United States in June 1997, and was released that December in preparation for Pepsi's 100th anniversary. It was at this point the logo began to be referred to as the Pepsi Globe. In October 2008, Pepsi announced that it would redesign its logo and rebrand many of its products by early 2009. <laughs> In 2009, Pepsi, Diet Pepsi, and Pepsi Max began using all lowercase fonts for name brands. <sighs> The brand's blue and red globe trademark became a series of smiles, with a central white band initially arcing at different angles depending on the product. In March 2023, Pepsi unveiled a new logo expected to launch in North America in late 2023 and internationally in 2024. The logo is a modernization of the vintage Pepsi logo. Accompanying branding elements will also shift from blue to black as their primary color. Walter Mack was named the new president of Pepsi Cola and guided the company through the 1940s. <laughs> Mac who supported progressive causes, noticed that the company's strategy of using advertising for a general audience either ignored African Americans or used ethnic stereotypes in portraying blacks. <sighs> Up until the 1940s, the full revenue potential of what was called the Negro market was largely ignored by white owned manufacturers in the U.S. Mac realized that black people were an untapped niche market and that Pepsi stood to gain market share by targeting its advertising directly towards them. <laughs> to this end, he hired Hannon Smith, an advertising executive from the Negro newspaper field, to lead an all-black sales team which had to be cut due to the onset of World War II. In 1947, Walter Mack resumed his efforts, hiring Edward F. Lloyd to lead a 12-man team. <laughs> they came up with advertising portraying black Americans in a positive light, such as one with a smiling mother holding a six-pack of Pepsi while her son, a young Ron Brown, who grew up to be Secretary of Commerce, reaches up for one. <sighs> Another ad campaign, titled Leaders in Their Fields, profiled 20 prominent African-Americans such as Nobel Peace Prize winner Ralph Munch and photographer Gordon Parks. Lloyd also led a sales team, composed entirely of blacks around the country to promote Pepsi. <laughs> Racial segregation and Jim Crow laws were still in place throughout much of the U.S. Lloyd's team faced a great deal of discrimination as a result from insults by Pepsi co-workers to threats by the Ku Klux Klan. 
On the other hand, it was able to use its anti-racism stance as a selling point, attacking Coke's reluctance to hire blacks and support by the chairman of the Coca-Cola company for segregationist governor of Georgia Herman Talmadge. <laughs> as a result, Pepsi's market share as compared to Coca-Cola shot up dramatically in the 1950s, with African-American soft drink consumers three times more likely to purchase Pepsi over Coke. <sighs> After the sales team visited Chicago, Pepsi share in the city overtook that of Coke for the first time. Journalist Stephanie Catrell interviewed six men who were on the team in the late 1940s. The team members had a grueling schedule working seven days a week, morning and night, for weeks on end. They visited butlers, churches, ladies' groups, schools, college campuses, YMCAs, community centers, insurance conventions, teacher and doctor conferences, and various civic organizations. They got famous jazzmen such as Duke Ellington and Lionel Hampton to promote Pepsi from the stage. <sighs> no group was too small or too large to target for a promotion. Pepsi advertisements avoided the stereotypical images common in the major media that depicted Aunt Jemima's and Uncle Hens, whose role was to draw a smile from white customers. Instead, it portrayed black customers as self-confident middle-class citizens who showed very good taste in their soft drinks. They were economical too, as Pepsi bottles were twice the size. This focus on the market for black people caused some consternation within the company and among its affiliates. <laughs> it did not want to seem focused on black customers for fear white customers would be pushed away. <sighs> in a national meeting, Matt tried to assuage the 500 bottlers in attendance by pandering to them, saying, We don't want you to become known as a nigger drink. After Mac left the company in 1950, support for the black sales team faded and it was cut. Lloyd was replaced in 1952 by R.V.C. Russell Jr., who was notable for his marketing campaigns towards black youth in New Orleans. <laughs> These campaigns, held at locales, attended largely by black children, would encourage children to collect Pepsi bottle caps, which they could then exchange for rewards. <sighs> One example is Pepsi's 1954 Pepsi Day at the Beach event, where New Orleans children could ride rides at an amusement park in exchange for Pepsi bottle caps. By the end of the event, 125,000 bottle caps been collected. According to the Pepsi Cola World, the New Orleans campaign was a success. Once people's supply of bottle caps ran out, the only way they could get more was to buy more Pepsi. According to consumer reports, in the 1970s, the rivalry continued to heat up the market. <laughs> Pepsi conducted blind taste tests in stores in what was called the Pepsi Challenge. These tests suggested that more consumers preferred the taste of Pepsi to Coca-Cola. <laughs> the sales of Pepsi started to climb and Pepsi kicked off the challenge across the nation. <sighs> This became known as the Cola Wars. In 1985, the Coca-Cola company, amid much publicity, changed its formula. The theory has been advanced that new Coke, as the reformulated drink, came to be known, was invented specifically in response to the Pepsi challenge. However, a consumer backlash led to Coca-Cola quickly reintroducing the original formula as Coca-Cola Classic. 
In 1989, Louis Joel mentioned the rivalry between the two companies in the song, We Didn't Start the Fire. The line, Rock and Roller Cola Wars, refers to Pepsi and Coke's usage of various musicians in advertising campaigns. <sighs> Coke used Paula Abdul, while Pepsi used Michael Jackson. <laughs> Both companies then competed to get other musicians to advertise its beverages. According to Beverage, the Jess 2008 report on carbonated soft drinks, PepsiCo's U.S. market share is 30.8%, while the Coca-Cola companies is 42.7%. <laughs> Coca-Cola outsells Pepsi in most parts of the U.S., notable exceptions being Central Appalachia, Montana, North Dakota, and Utah. <sighs> in the city of Buffalo, New York, Pepsi outsells Coca-Cola by a 2 to 1 margin. Overall, Coca-Cola continues to outsell Pepsi in almost all areas of the world. <laughs> However, exceptions include Oman, India, Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, the Dominican Republic, Guatemala, the Canadian provinces of Quebec, Newfoundland and Labrador, Prince Edward Island, Nova Scotia, and New Brunswick. Pepsi had one in the drink of French Canadians, and it continues to hold its dominance by relying on local Quebecois celebrities, especially Claude Munier of La Petite Vie fame, to sell its product. PepsiCo introduced the Quebec slogan, Here, it's Pepsi, easy, says Pepsi, in response to Coca-Cola ads proclaiming, Around the world, it's Coke, part out Vans Le Monde, says Coke. As of 2012, Pepsi is the third most popular carbonated drink in India, with a 15% market share, behind Sprite and Thumbs Up. <laughs> In comparison, Coca-Cola is the fourth most popular carbonated drink, occupying a mere 8.8% of the Indian market share. By most accounts, Coca-Cola was India's leading soft drink until 1977 when it left India because of the new foreign exchange laws which mandated majority shareholding in companies to be held by Indian shareholders. <laughs> The Coca-Cola company was unwilling to dilute its stake in its Indian unit as required by the Foreign Exchange Regulation Act, FERA. Thus sharing its formula with an entity in which it did not have majority shareholding. In 1988, PepsiCo gained entry to India by creating a joint venture with a Punjab government owned Punjab Agro Industrial Corporation, PAIC, and Voltas India Limited. <laughs> this joint venture marketed and sold VR Pepsi until 1991, when the use of foreign brands was allowed. PepsiCo bought out its partners and ended the joint venture in 1994. <sighs> In 1993, the Coca-Cola company returned in pursuance of India's liberalization policy. In Russia, Pepsi initially had a larger market share than Coke, but it was undercut once the Cold War ended. <laughs> in 1972, PepsiCo struck a barter agreement with the then-government of the Soviet Union, in which PepsiCo was granted exportation and Western marketing rights to Stolik Vodka. Change for importation and Soviet marketing of Pepsi. This exchange led to Pepsi being the first foreign product sanctioned for sale in the Soviet Union. Reminiscent of the way that Coca Cola became a cultural icon and its global spread spawned words like Coca Colonization, Pepsi Cola, and its relation to the Soviet system turned it into an icon. <laughs> In the early 1990s, the term Pepsi Stroika began appearing as a pun on Perestroika, the reform policy of the Soviet Union under Mikhail Gorbachev. <sighs> 
Which viewed your policy as an attempt to usher in Western products in deals there with the older elites. Pepsi, as one of the first American products in the Soviet Union, became a symbol of that relationship and the Soviet policy. This was reflected in Russian author Viktor Pelvin's book Generation P. In 1992, following the dissolution of the Soviet Union, Coca-Cola was introduced to the Russian market. <laughs> As it came to be associated with a new system and Pepsi with the old, Coca-Cola rapidly captured a significant market share that might otherwise have required years to achieve. By July 2005, Coca-Cola enjoyed a market share of 19.4%, followed by Pepsi with 13%. Pepsi was introduced in Romania in 1966, during the early liberalization policies of Nicolae Sosescu, opening up a factory at Constanta in 1967. <laughs> this was done as a barter agreement similar to the one in the USSR, however, Romanian wine would be sold in the United States instead. <sighs> The product quickly became popular, especially among young people, but due to the austerity measures imposed in the 1980s, the product became scarce and rare to find. Starting from 1991, PepsiCo entered the new Romanian market economy and still maintains a bigger popularity than its competitor, Coca-Cola, introduced in Romania in 1992. Despite heavy competition during the 1990s, sometime between 2000 and 2005, Pepsi overtook Coca-Cola in sales in Romania. Pepsi did not sell soft drinks in Israel until 1991. <laughs> Many Israelis and some American Jewish organizations attributed Pepsi's previous reluctance to expand operations in Israel to fears of an Arab boycott. Oh. Pepsi, which has a large and lucrative business in the Arab world, denied that, saying that economic, rather than political, reasons kept it out of Israel. The Cola Wars are the long-time rivalry between soft drink producers the Coca-Cola Company and PepsiCo, who have engaged in mutually targeted marketing campaigns for the direct competition between each company's product lines. Especially their flagship colas, Coca-Cola and Pepsi. <laughs> Beginning in the late 1970s and into the 1980s, the competition escalated until it became known as the Cola Wars. In 1886, John Stiff Pemberton, a pharmacist from Atlanta, Georgia, developed the original recipe for Coca-Cola. <laughs> by 1888, control of the recipe was acquired by Asa Griggs Chandler, who in 1896 founded the Coca-Cola Company. Two years later, in 1898, Khalid Radom renamed his brand's drink to Pepsi-Cola and formed the Pepsi-Cola Company in 1902, prompting the beginning of the Cola Wars. The two companies continued to introduce new and contemporary advertising techniques, such as Coke's first celebrity endorsement and 1915 contour model, until market instability following World War I forced Pepsi to declare bankruptcy in 1923. <laughs> In 1931, Pepsi went bankrupt once more, but recovered and began selling its products at an affordable 5 cents per bottle, reigniting the Cola Wars through to today. <sighs> Pepsi offered to sell out the Coca-Cola following both of its bankruptcies during this time, but Coca-Cola declined each time. Coca-Cola advertising has historically focused on wholesomeness and nostalgia. Whoa! Coca-Cola advertising is often characterized as family-friendly and often relies on cute characters. For example, the Coca-Cola Polar Bears mascot and Santa Claus around Christmas. During the 
the peak of the cola wars, as Coca-Cola saw its flagship product, losing market share to Pepsi as well as to Diet Coke and competitors' products, the company considered a change to the beverage its formula and flavor. In April 1985, the Coca-Cola Company introduced its new formula for Coca-Cola, which became popularly known as New Coke. Consumer backlash to the change led to the company making a strategic retreat on July 11, 1985, announcing its plans to bring back the previous formula under the name Coca-Cola Classic. Some think the decision to replace the original flavor was actually a strategic masterstroke to bolster Coke sales once it came back on the market, which it did. However, the Coca-Cola company vehemently denies the claim. Pepsi advertising is heavily supported by strategic sponsorships and online marketing. <laughs> Pepsi's logo utilizes the red, white, and blue colors of the flag of the United States, drawing on a strong sense of patriotism throughout its branding. In 1975, Pepsi began showing advertisements based on the Pepsi Challenge, in which ordinary people were asked which product they preferred in blind taste tests. <laughs> The campaign suggested that, when it came down to taste alone, consumers preferred Pepsi over Coca-Cola. In at least some of these tests, the Coca-Cola was kept at zero degrees Celsius, which is too cold for the taste to come out, whereas the Pepsi-Cola was kept at regular refrigerator temperature, rigging the test. <laughs> This prompted Coca-Cola's creation of the successful Diet Coke in 1982 and the unsuccessful New Coke three years later, both of which led to a major shifting point in the Cola Wars. Oh. However, the Pepsi Challenge was a marketing campaign and not a scientific study. <laughs> Subsequent studies with scientific controls found only modest differences between Pepsi and Coke. In the mid-1990s, Pepsi launched its most successful long-term strategy of the Cola Wars, Pepsi Stuff. <laughs> Using the slogan, Drink Pepsi, Get Stuff, consumers could collect Pepsi points on packages and cups, which could be redeemed for free Pepsi merchandise. <sighs> After researching and testing the program for over two years to ensure that it resonated with consumers, Pepsi launched Pepsi Stuff, which was an instant success. Due to its success, the program was expanded to include Mountain Dew and Pepsi's international markets worldwide. The company continued to run the program for many years, continually innovating with new features each year. <laughs> This line of commercials led to the court case Leonard v. PepsiCo, Incorporated, which was chronicled in the 2022 Netflix show Pepsi, Where's My Jet? Super Bowl 53 was played in Atlanta, which is where Coca-Cola has its head office in 2019. <laughs> Pepsi had been a major sponsor of the NFL for years, most recently renewing its sponsorship deal in 2011. Pepsi advertising tied to the game poked fun at the situation with slogans such as, Pepsi in Atlanta, how refreshing, hey Atlanta, thanks for hosting, we'll bring the drinks, and look who's in town for Super Bowl 53. Both companies ran television ads during the Super Bowl as Coca-Cola aired the commercial A Coke is a Coke just before the Super Bowl's national anthem. While Pepsi ran a series of ads with a tagline, Is Pepsi OK? Many of the brands available from the three largest soda producers, the Coca-Cola Company, PepsiCo and Zurich Dr. Pepper, are intended as direct equivalent competitors. The following chart lists these competitors by type or flavor of drink.
Pepsi is an official Pepsi mascot from Pepsi's Japanese corporate branch, created sometime around the mid 1990s. <laughs> Pepsi even took on three different outfits, each one representing the current style of the Pepsi canon distribution. Twelve commercials were created featuring the character. <laughs> His role in the advertisements is to appear with Pepsi to thirsty people or people craving soda. Pepsi even happens to appear at just the right time with a product. <laughs> After delivering the beverage, sometimes Pepsi even would encounter a difficult and action oriented situation which would result in injury. Pepsi-man is mostly silent, and he has no face except for a hole that opens up whenever he delivers a Pepsi. <laughs> Another more minor mascot, Pepsi Woman, also featured in a few of her own commercials for Pepsi Twist. Her appearance is basically a female Pepsi-man wearing a lemon-shaped balaclava. <sighs> In 1994, Sega AM2 released the Sega Saturn version of its arcade fighting game Fighting Vipers. In this game, Pepsi Man was included as a special character with his specialty listed as being the ability to quench one's thirst. Whoa! He does not appear in any other version or sequel. <laughs> In 1999, Kid developed a video game for the PlayStation entitled Pepsi Man. Hmm. As the titular character, the play runs on rails, forced motion, on a scrolling linear path, skateboards, rolls, and stumbles through various areas, avoiding dangers and collecting cans of Pepsi, all while trying to reach the thirsty person as in the commercials. Despite largely being considered a financial failure, Pepsi Man has developed a cult following due to its over-the-top and nonsensical premise. Pepsi has official sponsorship deals with the National Football League, National Hockey League, and National Basketball Association. In 2007, and from 2013 to 2022, Pepsi sponsored the NFL Super Bowl halftime shows. It was the sponsor of Major League Soccer until December 2015 and Major League Baseball until April 2017, both leagues signing deals with Coca-Cola. From 1999 to 2020, Pepsi also had the naming rights to the Pepsi Center, an indoor sports and entertainment facility in Denver, Colorado. Until the venue's new naming rights were announced on October 22, 2020. In 1997, after his sponsorship with Coca-Cola ended, retired NASCAR Cup Series driver Jeff Gordon signed a long-term contract with Pepsi, and he drove with a Pepsi logos on his car with various paint schemes for about two races each year, usually a darker paint scheme during nighttime races. Pepsi has remained as one of his sponsors ever since. Pepsi has also sponsored the NFL Rookie of the Year Award since 2002. Pepsi has the first global sponsorship deals with a UEFA Champions League and the UEFA Women's Champions League starting in the 2015-16 season along with a sister brand, Pepsi Max and became the global sponsor of the competition. Pepsi also has sponsorship deals in international cricket teams. <laughs> The Pakistani national cricket team is one of the teams that the brand sponsors. The team wears the Pepsi logo on the front of their test and ODI test match clothing. The Buffalo Bisons, an American hockey league team, was sponsored by Pepsi Cola. In its later years, the team adopted the beverage's red, white, and blue color scheme along with a modification of the Pepsi logo with the word Buffalo in place of the Pepsi Cola wordmark. <laughs> the Bisons ceased operations in 1970, making way for the Buffalo Sabres of the NHL. 
Pepsi also has been a sponsor of the Carolina Hurricanes of the National Hockey League since the team moved to North Carolina in 1997. In 2017, Pepsi was the jersey sponsor of the Papua New Guinea national basketball team. In the United States, Pepsi is made with carbonated water, high fructose corn syrup, caramel color, sugar, phosphoric acid, caffeine, citric acid, and natural flavors. A can of Pepsi, 12 fluid ounces, has 41 grams of carbohydrates, all from sugars, 30 milligrams of sodium, 0 grams of fat, 0 grams of protein, 38 milligrams of caffeine, and 150 calories. Pepsi has 10 more calories and 2 more grams of sugar and carbohydrates than Coca-Cola. <laughs> Caffeine-free Pepsi contains the same ingredients, but without the caffeine. Some regions, such as Sweden and the Netherlands, have recently undergone a reduction of sugar in the standard variety, replacing it with the artificial sweeteners as is from K and sucralose. <laughs> this change was done by PepsiCo Europe to slash the amount of sugar in all their drinks. By 25% near the end of 2025. This formula change was expanded to the United Kingdom version, distributed by Britvik in March 2023, except where served in restaurants and bars. <laughs> Currently, there are no plans for this formula to be introduced in North America. Pepsi Perfect, a vitamin-enriched Pepsi variation in special bottle shown in the movie Back to the Future Part 2 in scenes set in the year 2015. <laughs> this was later released as a limited edition drink. Only 6,500 bottles were available for $20.15. They have since been sold for hundreds of dollars on eBay. PepsiCo has produced a number of variations on its primary cola, Pepsi, over the years, including the following. North America. Pepsi, from 1898 to 1961, PepsiCo's signature cola product. It has been released in its current form since 1961. Caffeine-free Pepsi, 1982. Pepsi without the caffeine. It was first introduced in 1982 as Pepsi Free, but was changed to its current name in 1987. Pepsi Wild Cherry, 1988. Pepsi with cherry flavoring. It was known under the slightly different name of Wild Cherry Pepsi until 2005. <sighs> It is available in the United States, Canada, and Russia. Pepsi AM 1989, a variant of Pepsi that contained 25% extra caffeine and was marketed as a morning drink. It was introduced in test markets in August 1989, but was discontinued in October 1990 due to poor sales and reception. Pepsi Raging Raspberry, 1991, Pepsi with Raspberry Flavoring. It was released as part of the Pepsi Wild Punch, a range of flavored colas test, marketed in the United States from February to April 1991. <laughs> the soda was said to taste like a burst of raspberry rather than an actual raspberry flavor. Pepsi Strawberry Burst, 1991, Pepsi with Strawberry Flavoring. <laughs> it was released as part of the Pepsi Wild Punch, a range of flavored colas test, marketed in the United States from February to April 1991. Pepsi Tropical Chill, 1991, Pepsi with Orange Slash Pineapple Tropical Mix Flavoring. <laughs> 
It was released as part of the Pepsi Wild Lunch, a range of flavored colas test, marketed in the United States from February to April 1991. Crystal Pepsi, 1992, a clear cola that was sold for a short time between 1992 and 1993. <laughs> it returned in 2015 as part of a limited sweepstakes promotion and has been re-released several times since. Crystal, from the makers of Pepsi, 1994, a clear citrus slash cola hybrid cola that was sold for a short time in 1994 until the end of the year. Pepsi Cola, 1996, Pepsi with coffee flavoring. <sighs> it was test marketed in Philadelphia during May 1996 until 1997, which due to low sales, never led to a full release. Pepsi Candy, 1999, Pepsi with fruity sweet flavoring. It was sold in Canada in spring 1999. Pepsi Twist, 2000, Pepsi with lemon flavoring. <sighs> it was first released in 2000 and was discontinued in 2006. <laughs> It is still sold in many countries outside the United States. It was re-released as Pepsi NFL Kickoff in 2008 to promote the NFL Kickoffs. Pepsi Blue, 2002, a blue-colored, fruity slash very flavored soda which is described as a very cool fusion in marketing. <sighs> It was given a huge marketing push akin to other similar varieties of rival brands, for example, Vanilla Coke, Dr. Pepper Red Fusion, that would end up being a huge flop, being discontinued in 2004. It is still available in some countries and was re-released in the United States for the summer of 2021 for a limited time. Pepsi Vanilla, 2003, Pepsi with Vanilla Flavoring. It was released in the U.S. and Canada in 2003 as Pepsi's answer to Vanilla Coke. <sighs> it was eventually discontinued by 2005, but was relaunched in 2019 and is still available in some parts of the U.S. <laughs> It is also available in Hungary. Pepsi Lime, 2004. Pepsi with lime flavoring. <laughs> it was introduced in 2004 and was discontinued by 2006. It was later re-released as a standard, limited edition variety for the spring of 2019, but was later re-released permanently. <laughs> It was also available in the Philippines. Pepsi Holiday Spice, 2004. Pepsi with a cinnamon finish, somewhat similar to the Swedish Jolust. <laughs> it was released on 1 November 2004 in the U.S. and Canada as a limited edition, eight-week-long Christmas variety. It was sold again during the 2006 holiday season. Pepsi Summer Mix, 2007. Pepsi with tropical fruit flavoring. <sighs> it was released for the summer of 2007 in limited areas of the United States. <laughs> Pepsi Natural, 2009, Pepsi with natural ingredients and flavoring, and is sweetened with sugar instead of high fructose corn syrup. <laughs> it is the U.S. equivalent of Pepsi Raw. <sighs> it was released in 2009 and was discontinued in 2011 due to poor sales. Pepsi Cola Soda Shop, 
2009, a version of Pepsi Cola that is sweetened with sugar instead of high fructose corn syrup and lacking citric acid. It was first introduced as Pepsi Throwback in May 2009 as a limited edition and was sold again throughout 2010 to 2011 until becoming permanent. <laughs> It was rebranded to Pepsi Cola, made with real sugar, in June 2014, and has been rebranded to Pepsi Cola Soda Shop, made with real sugar, in early 2024. Pepsi Cherry Vanilla, 2010, Pepsi with Cherry Vanilla Flavoring. <laughs> It was released for the summer of 2010, for 8 weeks, and was re-released in February 2016, for Valentine's Day. Pepsi X, 2012, Pepsi with dragon fruit flavoring. <laughs> it was released as a limited edition in the fall of 2012 to promote the second season of the U.S. version of the X Factor. <sighs> It was sweetened with a blend of corn syrup, acid alpha, potassium, and sucralose. Pepsi Cola, made with real sugar vanilla, 2014, Pepsi with vanilla flavoring. It is a sugar, sweetened version of Pepsi vanilla and was released for the summer of 2014 as a limited edition. Pepsi Cola, made with real sugar cherry, 2014, Pepsi with cherry flavoring. <sighs> it is a sugar, sweetened version of Pepsi Wild Cherry, and was released for the summer of 2014 as a limited edition. Pepsi Ginger, 2016, a variety that blended cola with ginger ale. It was sold in Canada for a short time, from April 2016 and became well known during the time it was sold, for its strong ginger taste. Pepsi 1893 Original Cola, 2016, a discontinued variant of the original Pepsi with a combination of cola nuts, sugar, and sparkling water. <sighs> It was released as part of the Pepsi 1893 line, which features variants on the original Pepsi formulation, like Alan Bradham. Pepsi 1893 Ginger Cola, 2016, a discontinued Pepsi 1893 variant with ginger flavoring. It is also sold in Canada as Pepsi Ginger Cola. Pepsi 1893 Black Currant Cola, 2017, Pepsi 1893 variant with currant and berry flavoring. <sighs> it was soft, launched in February 2017, but was discontinued at the end of the year. Pepsi 1893 Citrus Cola, 2017, Pepsi 1893 variant with grapefruit flavoring. It was soft, launched in February 2017, but was discontinued at the end of the year. Pepsi Fire, 2017, Pepsi with cinnamon infusion. <sighs> it was sold for a limited time in the summer of 2017. Pepsi Salted Caramel, 2017, Pepsi with caramel flavoring. It was sold from November 2017 to the end of the year for the holiday season. Pepsi Berry, 2019, Pepsi with berry flavoring. <sighs> it was first sold as a standard limited edition variety in spring 2019. <laughs> Pepsi Mango, 2019, Pepsi with mango flavoring. It was first sold as a standard, limited edition variety in spring 2019. <sighs> Later, it was released permanently. Pepsi Pineapple, 2019, Pepsi with pineapple flavoring. 
It was released in the spring of 2019 as a limited edition available exclusively at Walmart stores and returned for a limited time in the summer of 2023 as part of a promotion exclusively with Little Caesars. It is expected to return as a Little Caesars exclusive again in the summer of 2024 in 20-ounce bottles rather than in cans. Pepsi Apple Pie 2020 Pepsi with artificial cinnamon and apple flavoring. It was available as part of a social media contest in 2020. Pepsi Hot Chocolate 2021 Pepsi with hot chocolate flavoring. <laughs> It was given out as a limited edition to people who participated on National Hot Chocolate Day using the hashtag National Hot Chocolate Day and hashtag Pepsi Offer on January 31, 2021. Huh. Only 2,000 cans of this flavor are known to exist. <laughs> this soda is said to taste like the classic American chocolate cola putting chocolate syrup in cola, but with a mild licorice taste. Pepsi Peaks 2021, Pepsi with marshmallow flavoring. <laughs> it was released as a limited edition sweepstakes in collaboration with Peaks Marshmallow Treats for the 2021 Easter season. <sighs> In February 2023, it was re-released in stores for a limited time. Pepsi Cola Soda Shop Cream Soda 2021, Pepsi with Cream Soda Flavoring. <sighs> it was released as part of the Pepsi Soda Shop series of sugar, sweetened colas as a limited edition from September 2021. <laughs> The drink was made available for a limited time again in November 2022. Pepsi Cola Soda Shop Black Cherry 2021, Pepsi with Black Cherry Flavoring. It was released as part of the Pepsi Soda Shop series of sugar sweetened colas as a limited edition from September 2021. <sighs> The drink was made available for a limited time again in November 2022. Nitro Pepsi Original Cola 2022 Nitrogen Infused Version of Pepsi released in March 2022. Nitro Pepsi Vanilla 2022 Nitrogen Infused Version of Pepsi with Vanilla Flavoring released in March 2022. Pepsi Maple Syrup 2022, a maple syrup flavored Pepsi released as part of a limited edition sweepstakes with IHOP maple syrup in March 2022. <sighs> it was released again for a limited time in April 2024 as an IHOP exclusive in the form of a fountain drink or as an ice cream float. Pepsi S'mores Toasty Marshmallow 2022, Pepsi with artificial marshmallow flavoring. <sighs> it was available as a limited edition for the 2022 holiday season. Pepsi S'mores Chocolate 2022 Pepsi with chocolate flavoring. It was available as a limited edition for the 2022 holiday season. Pepsi S'mores Graham Cracker 2022, Pepsi with artificial Graham Cracker flavoring. It was available as a limited edition for the 2022 holiday season. A Pepsi Peach 2024, Pepsi with peach flavoring to be released for a limited time starting April 22, 2024 along with a limited time return of Pepsi Lime. Europe. Pepsi Chill 1993, a cherry, flavored variant sold in Australia as a limited edition for the summer. Pepsi Slam 1993, a strawberry, flavored variant sold in Australia as a limited edition for the summer. Pepsi Rage 1993, a raspberry, flavored variant sold in Australia as a limited edition for the summer. 
Pepsi Punch, 1994, a sweet coconut and fruit punch flavored variant. <sighs> It was sold in the UK and France for a short amount of time in 1994. Pepsi Strawberry, 1994, a strawberry flavored variant. It was sold in the UK and France for a short amount of time in 1994. Pepsi Tropical, 1994, a pineapple and sweet orange flavored variant. <sighs> It was sold in the UK and France for a short amount of time in 1994. Pepsi Peach, 1996, a sweet peach, flavored variant with a hint of cream soda. It was sold in Portugal in 1996 and was discontinued shortly after due to low sales. Pepsi Boom, 1997, a repackaging of caffeine-free Pepsi aimed at the child demographic. It was sold in Germany, Italy, and Spain until 2019, when it was rebranded under the standard caffeine-free Pepsi name. <laughs> it was also sold in France as Pepsi Cool, from 1997 until being discontinued in the country in 2003. Pepsi Olita, 2000, a cola, flavored variant that was sold as a limited edition in Spain to promote Olita in 2000. Pepsi Blue, 2000, a blue-colored, fruity slash very flavored variant. It has been sold in countries such as Bulgaria, Denmark, Finland, Italy, Romania, Hungary, and Turkey. Pepsi Cappuccino, 2000s, a coffee-flavored variant. <sighs> it was sold in Russia, Romania, and other various parts of Europe during the 2000s. <laughs> it is also known as Pepsi Cafe Chino. Pepsi X Energy Cola, 2004, an energy drink variant that contained extra caffeine, a unique flavor, and a reddish tint. <laughs> it was first test, marketed in the Netherlands before being available in several countries such as Russia, Sweden, Denmark, Vietnam, and Brazil. Pepsi Ice Cream, 2005, a vanilla flavored variant that was sold in Russia. <laughs> It reportedly tasted like cream soda. Pepsi Samba, 2005, a tropical fruit, flavored variant containing the flavors mango and tamarind. <laughs> it was released in Australia as a limited edition for 2005. Pepsi Clear, 2005, a clear colored variant that was released in Mexico as a limited edition for the Christmas season in 2005. <laughs> it is the Mexican equivalent of Crystal Pepsi. Pepsi Gold, 2006, a ginger hinted gold colored variant that was released for 2006 FIFA World Cup and ICC Cricket World Cup 2007 promotions in Southeast Asia, Central Europe. Finland, Russia, Turkey, and the Middle East. For the 2010 FIFA World Cup, the drink was re-released as Pepsi Cheer. Pepsi Summer Chill, 2007, an apple flavored variant that was sold in Poland as a limited edition for the summer of 2007. <laughs> in the Czech Republic and Slovakia, it was sold as Pepsi Ice. Pepsi Fresh, 2007, a fresh cola variant that was sold for the summers of 2007 and 2008 in Russia. Pepsi Raw, 2008, a variant made with all natural ingredients and no artificial colors. <sighs> it was first sold in the UK in 2008, but was withdrawn from the market in September 2010. Pepsi Jaffa, 2009, an orange, 
flavored variant that was available for short time in the Netherlands and the north of Belgium in restaurants and cafes in 2009. It was only available as a fountain drink. Taxi Mojito, 2009, an alcohol-free lemon mint variant. Oh. It was sold in Italy as a limited edition for the summer of 2009. Taxi Giga, 2014, a citrus flavored variant inspired by Brazilian culture. It was sold as a limited summer edition for 2014 in Romania and Denmark. Pepsi Lime Mint 2021, a lime and mint flavored variant available in Poland, Estonia and Finland since 2021. And Pepsi Pineapple Mint 2022, a pineapple and mint flavored variant released in the Czech Republic during the summer of 2022. Japan. Pepsi Carnival, 2006, a tropical fruit, flavored Pepsi available in Japan for a limited time that debuted in summer 2006. <laughs> the same concept was later released as Pepsi Summer Mix in 2007 in the U.S., although the formula was most likely different. Pepsi Red, 2006, released alongside Pepsi Gold in November 2006. This variant had a somewhat spicy ginger flavor. Pepsi Gold, 2006, released alongside Pepsi Red in November 2006. This variant had a mild ginger flavor. Pepsi Ice Cucumber, 2007, a limited edition green cucumber flavored Pepsi sold in summer 2007. Pepsi Blue Hawaii, 2008, a summer 2008 limited edition, pineapple and lemon flavored Pepsi, blue in color. Pepsi White, 2008, a limited edition variant with yogurt flavor, sold in winter 2008. Whoa! It was released again, for a limited time, in winter 2012, with a mandarin orange flavor. <sighs> Another variant, called White Cola Pepsi, was released in 2015, with a light citrus flavor similar to the 2012 version. Pepsi Shizo, 2009, a limited edition green Shizo, flavored soda sold during summer 2009. Pepsi Azuki, 2009, a Azuki Green, flavored limited edition Pepsi, released on October 20, 2009. Pepsi Vehicle, 2010, a vehicle tree fruit flavored limited edition Pepsi released on May 25, 2010. Pepsi Strong Shot, 2010, a limited edition Pepsi released in 2010 with a high concentration of caffeine and extra carbonation. <laughs> Followed upon in 2015 with Pepsi Strong and Pepsi Strong Zero. These were sold in larger sizes and with an even higher concentration of caffeine and carbonation. <laughs> this was further followed upon in May 2016 with Pepsi Strong 5.0 GV, a soda so carbonated that a new bottle had to be designed to contain it. Pepsi Mont Blanc, 2010, a limited edition Pepsi, based on the French chestnut dessert. <laughs> Sold for a limited time from October 2010. Pepsi Dry 2011, a limited edition non-sweet, but not completely sugar-free, bitter Pepsi variant released by Suntory on May 24, 2011. Pepsi Caribbean Gold 2011, a limited edition, golden-colored, white sapo fruit-flavored Pepsi released on July 26, 2011. Pepsi Pink, 2011, a limited edition pink, strawberry milk, flavored Pepsi released on November 8, 2011, for a limited time. It was released again in 2014. Pepsi Black, 
2012, a soda similar to Pepsi Dry, with 50% less sugar than regular Pepsi, and blacker in color, released in summer 2012, by Suntory. Pepsi Extra, 2012, a caffeinated variant of Pepsi sold in 200 milliliters of cans in summer 2012. <sighs> The same concept was later released in 2019 as Pepsi Refresh Shot. Pepsi Salty Watermelon, 2012, a watermelon flavored Pepsi, sold in Japan in June 2012 for a limited time only. Pepsi Special, 2012, contains an ingredient to limit the absorption effect. <laughs> sold in June 2012. Pepsi Special Lemon Mint, 2015, a limited edition Pepsi, released in the summer of 2015. <laughs> it was a zero-calorie soda, pounded to make the food, for specified health uses, FOSHU, standards. Pepsi Ghost, 2015, released on October 6, 2015. <laughs> The bottles featured Halloween-themed labels, while the flavor was an unidentified mystery flavor. Pepsi Sakura, 2016, a floral cherry blossom-flavored Pepsi, released in March 2016. Pepsi Christmas Cola, 2017, a limited edition, Christmas-themed Pepsi, released November 21, 2017. While not cake batter flavor, the creamy white cola and strawberry combination is reminiscent of the whipped cream and strawberries of a traditional Japanese Christmas cake. Pepsi Halloween Cola 2017, released in October 2017. This mystery flavor was pink with a sweet cherry and bubblegum flavor. It also somewhat resembled past Sakura flavored Pepsi. Pepsi Orange, 2020, an orange flavored Pepsi variant, released in 2020. Pepsi Caramel Punch, 2020, a limited edition caramel flavored Pepsi, released on October 20, 2020. And Pepsi Carash Senyo Cola, 2022, Pepsi variant made to be enjoyed along Carash Fried Chicken, released on June 9, 2022. China. Pepsi Sweet Osmanthus, 2020. Pepsi with Sweet Osmanthus flower flavoring, launched in 2020. Pepsi White Peach Anulon, 2021. Pepsi with White Peach Anulon tea flavoring, launched in 2021. And Pepsi Vampiru and Green Bamboo, 2022. Pepsi with Vampiru and Bamboo flavoring, launched in 2022. Latin America. Pepsi Lemon, 2002. Pepsi with lemon flavor, released in Mexico in 2002, later returned as Pepsi Twist in 2004. No longer produced. Pepsi Twist Ale, 2003, sold during summertime in Brazil. It is a Pepsi variant with a lemon flavor stronger than regular Pepsi Twist. <laughs> Twisteo in Portuguese is the augmented love twist. Pepsi Cappuccino, 2006, a blend of cola with mocha and coffee flavor. <laughs> Released for a limited time in Guatemala and El Salvador in 2006 in 600 milliliters, 20 U.S. fluid ounces bottles. Later introduced in Honduras in 2012. Pepsi Retro, 2008, released in Mexico in February 2008. <sighs> Pepsi made with natural ingredients, sugar cane, and cola nut extract. Pepsi, 2009, Pepsi spelled differently as Pepsi. Produced in Argentina in 2009 and Mexico in 2011. And Pepsi Caf, 
2000, one of a number of coffee-flavored Pepsi variants introduced outside the U.S. throughout the 2000s. Pepsi Blue Chill Pull-Up. One simply Pepsi Blue, which was promoted by Britney Spears, was released in Vietnam. <laughs> Another version of Pepsi, Pepsi Ice Mint, flavored Pepsi Soul, for a limited time along with Pepsi Fire in Southeast Asia, including Malaysia. Pepsi Cheer, a sweet syrup, tasting style of Pepsi Soul, in Thailand in 2010. Pepsi Fire, a limited edition, cinnamon flavored variety that is sold in Guam, Satan, Thailand, Mexico, Malaysia, Singapore, the Philippines, and Vietnam. Oh. It is also a Pepsi Ice Twin version. Pepsi Green, a bright green variety, introduced in Thailand on January 15, 2009. Pepsi Creaming Soda, a strong cream and vanilla light Pepsi tasting soda. <laughs> Giving out an ice cream milkshake like flavor. Oh. Available in Australia and New Zealand. Pepsi Ice. Pepsi with an icy mint flavor. Sold in Guam, Thailand, Malaysia, Singapore, and the Philippines. <laughs> in summer 2007, Pepsi used the name Pepsi Ice in the Czech Republic and Slovakia for a limited edition cola with apple flavor. Pepsi Light, sold in Australia and New Zealand for short time. Pepsi Aha, lemon flavored Pepsi sold in India. Pepsi Pinas, Pepsi Blue, renamed sold in Philippines. Pepsi Pushy, sold only in Philippines. Pepsi Mango, available both in Australia and New Zealand since 2021. Pepsi Wet, sold in Thailand. Pepsi Carrot, coffee flavored, sold in Malaysia and Singapore. Low calorie variety are Diet Pepsi slash Pepsi Light. Diet Pepsi, 1963 slash 1964, the original low calorie version of Pepsi. <laughs> it was first test marketed in 1963 under the name Patio Diet Cola and was rebranded as Diet Pepsi when it officially launched in 1964. It is known as Pepsi Light in most international regions, and Pepsi Diet in the UK, from the late 1990s until 2013. Caffeine-free Diet Pepsi, 1982, Pepsi without the caffeine. <sighs> it was first introduced in 1982 as Diet Pepsi-free, but was changed to its current name in 1987. <laughs> It is also available in some other regions including the United Kingdom. Diet Pepsi Wild Cherry, 1988. Cherry flavored Diet Pepsi, introduced in 1988. Whoa! It was known under the slightly different name of Diet Wild Cherry Pepsi until 2005, and was originally found in scarce regions until the rebranding. Diet Pepsi AM, 1989, a variety of Diet Pepsi that contained 25% extra caffeine and was marketed as a morning drink. It was introduced in test markets in August 1989, but was discontinued in October 1990 due to poor sales and reception. Diet Crystal Pepsi, 1992, a low-calorie, clear cola that was sold for a short time between 1992 and 1993. <laughs> Unlike its regular counterpart, this version has never been released. Diet Pepsi Cola, 1996, Diet Pepsi with coffee flavoring. <laughs> it was test marketed in Philadelphia during May 1996 until 1997, which due to low sales, Never led to a full release. Diet 
Diet Pepsi Lemon 2000 Lemon Flavor Diet Pepsi. It was first released as Diet Pepsi Twist in 2000 and was discontinued alongside its regular counterpart in 2006. It was re-released as Diet Pepsi NFL Kickoff during the NFL Kickoffs of 2008 and again under its current name as a permanent variety in 2009. <laughs> it is however no longer available. Diet Pepsi Vanilla 2003 Diet Pepsi with vanilla flavoring. <laughs> It was released in the U.S. and Canada in 2003 as Pepsi's answer to Vanilla Coke. It remained on shelves even after the regular version was discontinued. Diet Pepsi Lime 2004 Pepsi with Lime Flavoring. <sighs> it was introduced in 2004 Diet Coke with Lime and remained on shelves after the regular variety was discontinued. It is also sold in Spain as Pepsi Light Lima. Diet Pepsi Jazz 2006 2007, a series of flavored colas available exclusively in diet form. <laughs> the range launched with black cherry, French vanilla, and strawberries and cream flavors in July 2006, followed on with a caramel cream flavor in February 2007. <sighs> They were all discontinued by 2009. Pepsi Light Mojito, 2006-2007, a non-alcoholic Mojito flavor Pepsi Light. It was Germany in 2008 and later sold in Italy in 2009 as a limited edition. Diet Pepsi Cherry Vanilla, 2010, Diet Pepsi with Cherry Vanilla flavoring. <sighs> It was released for the summer 2010, for eight weeks. A Diet Pepsi Splenda Formula 2015 Diet Pepsi sweetened with sucralose instead of aspartum. Uh. It was first released in 2015 as a reformulation of regular Diet Pepsi, which replaced the original aspartum sweetened formula until 2018. <laughs> While no longer available for retail, it can still be purchased via e-commerce. Pepsi Max. Pepsi Max, 1993, the original variation of the drink. <laughs> it was first introduced in 1993 in the United Kingdom and Italy and since expanded across the world. It has no connection to the American Pepsi Max, which is now known as Pepsi Zero Sugar. Pepsi Max Lemon, 2004, a lemon flavored variety. <sighs> it was first sold in Belgium as Pepsi Max Cool Lemon before renaming in 2017 and has also been sold in Norway, Sweden, the Netherlands, and Germany. Pepsi Max Lemon and Lime Twist. 2005, a lemon slash lime flavored variety. <sighs> it was introduced to the United Kingdom in early 2005 and was discontinued by 2007. <laughs> it was also sold in France as Pepsi Max Citron Citron Vert. Pepsi Max Punch, 2005, a ginger and cinnamon flavored version that was sold in the United Kingdom for the 2005 Christmas season. It is similar to Pepsi Holiday Spice. Pepsi Max Gold, 2006, a limited edition variety that was sold in Finland in 2006. Pepsi Max Coffee Cino, 2006, a coffee flavored variety sold in a number of countries. It was released in the United Kingdom in 2006, but was withdrawn a year later. <laughs>
It was also released in France and Portugal as a Pepsi Max Cappuccino. Pepsi Max Chill, 2007, an apple flavored variety that was sold as a limited edition in Sweden and Finland in the summer of 2007. Pepsi Max Loho, 2008, a Mojito Lime Slash Mint flavored variety that was sold in Finland in 2008. It was also available in Denmark in 2009 as Pepsi Max Mojito. Pepsi Max Energy, 2008, a variant with 66% more caffeine than the standard variety. <sighs> It was sold in Germany in 2008. Pepsi Max Wild Side, 2010, a wild beetle, flavored variety that was sold in Sweden in 2010. Pepsi Max Lime, 2011, a lime favorite variety. Whoa! It was first sold as Pepsi Max Ceasefire and Pepsi Max Citrus Freeze in Australia slash New Zealand and the United Kingdom respectively in 2011 as part of a promotion with Doritos Corn Chips. <sighs> it was re-released in Australia under its current name for a limited time in 2016 and re-released in the United Kingdom in 2021. It has since been introduced in Lebanon, Finland, Sweden, Norway, Iceland, Hungary, Romania, Poland, Serbia, Czech Republic. Pepsi Max Cherry, 20 UN, a cherry flavored variety. <laughs> it was first released in the United Kingdom in June 2011 only at Asda stores in two liter bottles and gained a wide release in 2012. <sighs> It has also been released in France, 2014, Denmark, Norway, Germany, 2015, Finland, Iceland, 2016, and Russia, 2018. Pepsi Max Ginger, 2017, a ginger flavored variety. It has been released in the United Kingdom, Lebanon, Russia, Norway, Finland, the Netherlands, Denmark, Sweden, and Germany. Pepsi Max Vanilla, 2018, a vanilla flavored variety. <sighs> it was first sold in Australia in February 2018 and was later released in New Zealand in April. <laughs> it was later released in Poland and Germany. Pepsi Max Raspberry, 2018, a raspberry flavored variety. <laughs> It was first sold in Australia in 2018 and was later released in the United Kingdom since March 2019 and in Turkey since 2020. <sighs> it was also sold in Nordic countries like Sweden, France, as Pepsi Black Raspberry, Russia, Taiwan and the United Arab Emirates. Pepsi Max Cream and Soda, 2019, a cream soda flavored variety. It was sold in Australia in August 2019. Pepsi Max Mango, 2020, a mango flavored variety that was first sold in Australia in August 2020 and later made available in Hungary, Poland, Czech Republic, Serbia, Sweden, Turkey, Denmark, and most recently the United Kingdom. And Pepsi Max No Caffeine, 2020, a caffeine-free variety that was introduced in the United Kingdom in 2021. Other low-calorie varieties. Pepsi Light, 1975, an alternative variant of Diet Pepsi sold in the United States. <laughs> it featured a lemon flavor that was used to overcome the powerful aftertaste of saccharin. The lemon flavoring was removed in 1984 when the sweetener was changed to a spartan and was discontinued by 1988. It has no connection to the alternative name Diet Pepsi uses in most countries. 
Pepsi Max, Canada, 1994. The Canadian version of Pepsi Max used a completely different formula than the one used internationally. Although airing the same package and design, being a mid-calorie cola, sweetened with a blend of corn syrup and a spartan. It was discontinued by 2002. Pepsi XL, 1995, a mid-calorie cola, targeted at males, and transitioned consumers making the move from regular to diet colas, similar to the version of Pepsi Max sold in Canada. It was sweetened with a 50-50 blend of corn syrup and aspartam. <sighs> It was test, marketed in Florida in 1995, but possible low sales never led to a full release in the United States. Pepsi One, 1998, a one-calorie cola that was originally sweetened with a blend of aspartam and acetylfum potassium with one calorie per serving. <sighs> It was made to be similar to the international Pepsi Max but used its own formula. <laughs> Aspartam was exchanged for Splenda, branded Sucralose in 2005, with a major rebranding. It continued to use the 2003 Pepsi design until mid-2012, and then swapped to the new logo. It was discontinued in 2015, following low sales and the swapping of Diet Pepsi's main sweetener from aspartam to sucralose. Pepsi Edge, 2004, a mid-calorie cola sold in the United States and Canada that contained half the carbohydrates, calories and sugars of a normal Pepsi and was sweetened with Splenda brand sucralose. <laughs> It was PepsiCo's answer to the similarity short-lived Coca-Cola C2. It was known as Pepsi Advantage in Canadian French. <laughs> the drink suffered from poor sales and was discontinued in 2005. It was featured on an episode of The Apprentice 2, in which teams had to design a prototype bottle. Pepsi Max, 2006, a zero-calorie Pepsi available in Japan and South Korea, developed by Suntory, also advertised through the Enum Tiger and Bunny Amu, known Max of TVXQ. Pepsi Zero Sugar, 2007, a zero-calorie cola. <laughs> It was originally known as Diet Pepsi Max, 2007-2008, and Pepsi Max, 2008-2016, although it's not related to the drink sold outside the U.S. and Canada. <sighs> Until a formula change in late 2022, the drink had more caffeine than standard Pepsi, alongside Yensig Extract. Pepsi Twist Free, 2008, a low-calorie version of Pepsi that was sold in Mexico. It contains three calories of the natural lemon juice. Pepsi Chick, 2009, a version of Diet Pepsi with extra caffeine and ginseng. <sighs> it was introduced in Mexico in 2009. Pepsi Twist Zero, 2010, a zero-calorie lime, flavored cola that was available in Brazil. Pepsi Max Ceasefire, 2010, a lime, flavored variant of Pepsi Max sold in the United States that was released as part of a promotional tie with special, burn, Doritos corn chips. Pepsi Next. 2012, a mid-calorie version of Pepsi, released in March 2012, described by the company as having 60% lower sugar, content and fewer calories. <sighs> it was discontinued by 2015. Pepsi Next Cherry Vanilla, 2012, a mid-calorie cherry vanilla, flavored Pepsi that was sold for a limited time in the summer of 2012. Pepsi Next 
Pepsi Next Paradise Mango 2012, a mid calorie mango flavored Pepsi that was sold for a limited time in the summer of 2012. Pepsi Next, Stevia version, 2013, the version of Pepsi Next in some regions outside the United States are sweetened with Stevia as the sweetener. It was sold in Canada, France and the Netherlands. The packaging was later changed to that of Pepsi True. Pepsi Strong Zero 2015, a variation of Diet Pepsi with extra carbonation and caffeine. <laughs> it was sold in Japan by Suntory in 2015 alongside its regular counterpart. Pepsi Black 2017, a low-calorie cola similar to but not to be confused with Pepsi Max. <laughs> It was introduced in 2017 in Croatia, the Czech Republic, Greece, Hungary, Slovakia, Slovenia, and Ukraine. <sighs> in the latter countries, it replaced Pepsi Light. Pepsi Zero Sugar Mango, 2021, a mango flavored variant of Pepsi Zero Sugar sold in the United States. It was introduced to coincide with a permanent release of the standard Pepsi Mango. Pepsi Zero Sugar Wild Cherry, 2021, a cherry flavored variant of Pepsi Zero Sugar sold in the United States. Pepsi Zero Sugar Vanilla, 2021, a vanilla flavored variant of Pepsi Zero Sugar sold in the United States. A Pepsi Zero Sugar Soda Shop Cream Soda, 2022, a cream soda, flavored variant of Pepsi Zero Sugar sold as part of the Pepsi Soda Shop range. It was sold as a limited edition in November 2022, joining the standard variety. A Pepsi Perfect, a vitamin-enriched Pepsi variation shown in the movie Back to the Future Part 2 and scene set in the year 2015. That's all for this remastered episode today. Thank you for watching. And make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel for more contents like it usual and we'll see you in another time.